So I share you my screen and hope you can see it now. And let's start. So. Okay. So uh, first of all, to create a cockpit, uh, we need to go as end user, we need to go in our um, mic workspace area. So we log in, in inside Noage, we go to my workspace area and then we click on analysis, which is uh, where we find uh, all our analysis created and where we can create a new analysis. So we have on the right top corner, the add button that we can click uh, to create another new cockpit. So to create our new analysis uh, through a cockpit. So the cockpit designer will open and then here in, uh, in the right top corner, you can see the menu button. So here there are all the list of uh, all the menu voices that you have available inside an OH cockpit. So first of all, when we start creating a cockpit, uh, we need to add and connect some data. And we do that uh, via uh, the data sets, that is uh, the way inside Noage to connect to our data and then use them inside our documents. And in particular, in this case, inside our cockpits. So in the Takta configuration menu voice, you can connect in it the, the different data sets, uh, one or more, that you want to use inside the cockpit to create your analysis. Then we have other uh, menu voices that are, for example, this one that is general configuration menu voice, voice where you can set the general configuration of the cockpit and of the widget. So configuration that are common to all the widgets, so all the elements and container of your elements inside the cockpit. Then we have the add button that permits you to add different widgets inside Noage. And we will see then which kind of widget we have inside Noage and we can add. Then in the save button permits you to save your cockpit and save all the changes you make to the cockpit. Finally, we have the clear cache button that is useful when you uh, set as in cache some of your data set. So setting cache the data set, it means that you um, write and persist the results of the data sets according to the different parameters you set inside the cache DB. So if you want to clear the cache, so to refresh the data that are present inside the, the DB cache, you have to clear cache to refresh them and then uh, persist them again. And in the active selection button, you can see the active selections. So uh, let's see better how to add a data set inside an OH cockpit. So you go, you can see here, we have, oh, sorry, um, just a minute, okay, we have, two sections, so the left one and the right one. In the left one, we had the data set section. So clicking on the Add button, you can uh, go to the list of all data sets available for the end user. So um, the data sets that the end user created by itself and data sets that the, a technical user made available for the end user. So here in the list, in the search area, you can search the data sets one or more that are of interest for you and that you want to use in your analysis, click on it and then save in order to add the data set to do your cockpit. So to the list of the data sets that you want to use inside the cockpit. As we can see, we have uh, the use cache button that is the button, the area to check if you want to put in cache your data sets and then the frequency one that's useful when you have real time data and you want to set a frequency of refresh of your data. In that case, you don't use a use cache um, button. You don't check use cache button. So in the right area, as we can see, we have the documents area. In Noage cockpits, you can add other documents that are 
maybe cockpit that are defined inside Noage. So for example, if you want to add a PDF document, so an office document of Noage inside your cockpit, you can do that clicking on add and then adding it to, to the list of documents that you want to use and to uh, show inside your cockpit. So it can be an office document, can be a report, can be some, something else other kind of documents that you can define and create inside Noage. Uh, here is only the list, so if you want them to show it inside the cockpit, you have to add a um, widget document, as we can see after. Then we can see, too, that we have different tabs. In the associations tab, if you have more than one um, data sets uh, defined and inserted inside your cockpit and you want to link them in order to uh, make them interact when you do a selection, so you maybe do a filter, filter data of one of the two data sets and you want that the same filter is applied to the other, doc other documents. So if you want to other data sets, you want to link them, you have to define the link between the two data sets inside association tab. Then frequency tab is where you can set a general frequency of refresh and then in template tab you can see in JSON format the template that is behind your cockpit. So you have a designer but the results of all you do inside the designer is in the JSON um, file and so um, a file with a JSON format so there you can see and check the template but usually is not uh, needed to do that but in case you need you can see it there so once you have added your data set to the cockpit we can start adding and creating uh, widgets so not all old widgets that we have needs a data set but uh, uh, as you know when you create an analysis the, the data are the basis of all so here are the different type of that of widgets that we can add to the cockpit so we have for example text widget where you can create and add a text that can be a fixed test, so for example, a title, but can be also, for example, if you want to highlight the value of a parameter, external parameter of your cockpit, you can insert it here. Uh, or two, if you want to um, uh, show the value, aggregated value um, of uh, a measure, so for example, if you want to show the total sales, um, so the sum of all your sales, you can add a text uh, widget. In the image widget, you can add an image. So for example, if you need to, to add a logo or other uh, kind of images uh, to, to your cockpit, you can uh, use that kind of widget. Then in the chart widget, you define different charts. So you have the designer to create the chart, as we can see, we will see, and uh, then add them to the cockpit. In the HTML widget, you can um, you can add uh, and code HTML and CSS code in order to personalize and create cards and something like that. So it's um, for that reason that I asked you before if you know HTML and CSS because inside Noage you can use that uh, skills and knowledge to personalize and make more beautiful, if you want to say, your cockpits. Then we can add the tables with the widget tables and cross tables. So if you want to cross different information in the cross table, you can do that. Then, as I told you before, uh, the document widget is the one that permits you to add the document uh, inside Noage. You can if you haven't uh, selected a document before in the data configuration, you can to add it directly from the widget and then it will be will appear inside the document. So in the document area inside the data configuration is useful too because if you have a parameterized document is there where you have to set the parameters. And two, I can tell you that for association you can 
to associate a dataset with a document using the parameters of the document, but it's just for your information. Now in, we won't see this. Then the, uh, you can add to the selector widget. The selector widget permits you to insert like of uh, um, combo box or list with values of a column, distinct values of a column that you can use as filters. If you have a selector and you click on a selector, so do a selection of a value, for example, if you have different values of, of product families, so food, drink, and you select food, if you want to see the selection that are active and then you want to be able to deselect, unselect them, you can insert the widget active selection that permits you to have the list of all the selection you did inside your copy. So now let's go in detail on how to create a widget chart. So first of all, we need to specify which data set we want to use to uh, retrieve the data that we will show inside the chart. So we can go here and click and directly have the list of the data set with um, inserted and when selected inside the data configuration, but we can too, using the add button, add a new one that maybe we haven't selected yet. Then we have other tabs, so the chart engine designer, the style and the filters. The chart engine designer is where you design your chart. So here you have in the first tab chart, the the list of all charts available um, inside NoH. So bar charts, core charts, uh, uh, heat maps, tree maps, uh, pie charts. So different charts that permit you uh, to create your analysis and uh, um, choose the one that fit best to what you want to show and to the information and analysis that the, you want uh, and the end user want to do. So for example, Let's uh, select uh, a line chart in this case. And then we go to structure to define uh, which are the uh, which columns, so which data we want to show inside. So for example, we select the month and then we select the store sales and the storage cost because we want to see more than one series compared in our line chart. Then clicking on that arrow, we have um, the category um, menu where we can set some uh, properties of the categories, so of the axis. The category basically are the x-axis section um, in case we have axis and in case, for example, of pie chart when, where we don't have axis is where you set the categories for which you want to split, uh, have the different slices, for example. And here you can set uh, some properties of the category. So, for example, configuration for the axis, um, title for the axis uh, or column ordering and so on. Um, Due to the fact that different charts have different configurations that can be set, this menu area can change according to the type of chart. So, for example, in Axis Title, we can go and select and select the title, so decide if we want to hide it or not. Another important thing that you can do is to select another column different from the one you show to order it. So for example, maybe you have the month names and you don't want that they are ordered alphabetically inside the chart, but you want to order them according to the month order. So you can select here another column that contains that information, so month of year, and decide if you want to select them as ascending or descending. For the series axis, so for the series area is the same. So you clicking on the arrow, you can see uh, the other uh, where, how to configure it, uh, some properties common to all the series. So again, axis configuration, axis title configuration, and to for example, if you want to set some properties for the major and minor grid. So here again, we can hide the title or make a styles. Here too, we have uh, 
the section where to edit a single series, so the single measure that you want to show inside your uh, chart. Here you can set the name, for example, if you want to change not store sales but only sales, or if you want to give them a name that is not the one you have in your inside your data set, but another that is more clear for the end user. You can set the aggregation types, it can be sum, it can be average, it can be count, count distinct, and so on. And then to the item type, if you want to show or not the value, the precision, and so on. Then in the configuration tab, you can set different configuration for the chart. So, in, for example, in the generic, you can set the orientation, the font family of font size that are common to all the elements of the chart. So, for example, this is both the size of the axis label, x axis label, y axis label of the labels of the values that we, you want to show if you want. So these are generic and common configuration for all the elements inside the um, inside uh, your chart. Okay, so not specific one. Then. Um, for example, here we can change the font size and set it to the color and so on. We can decide in the legend area to show the legend, to put it top button, left or right, so the position of your legend. And then too, we can set here the font family and so on. In that section, so in configuration, is where you set to the colors of your palette. And for example, if you want to insert a title for the charts, so not for the widget, is that the area. So here in style, we have uh, indeed all the configuration of the widget, so of the container of your chart. So here you can set the title, borders of the widget. So if you want to give a color to the border, if you want to set a background and other options of, your, of the container of your chart. So here, for example, we can set a title for our new chart that will be external to the chart. So for example, store by month, and we can set other properties to then saving here we have our uh, chart line chart created now what i can do is to resize it and move it in order to um, put it in the area i want and then starting to create my dashboard okay so let's go and add another widget so I told you before that we can click on different elements and do selections. And maybe we want to show which selection we did. So adding ugly selection, we can do that. So we can set here if we want to show the name of the data set from which we did the selection. So for example, this is food mart and so on and we can see to show the name of the column so for example if you click on the mount we will see the mount and then we can select two if we want to alternate rows and so on and then we have uh, um, below all the settings for the cockpit so for the container of our new widget active selection widget so like before i can set the title and save so in the same way, I can resize it and put it where I want. Exactly in the same way I did it before. So let's see now another important properties that we can um, add, uh, we can do uh, creating. Um, a cockpit. So here we go to the generic configuration, general settings uh, that I told you before is the area where you can set the, the, the generic configuration of your cockpit. So you can give a cockpit name and hit description. You can set the background for the cockpit and some properties of the menu and widgets. So for example, if you want to sh show the menu button, so the one I showed you before, to in visualization mode. 
where you won't see that, but for example, you will see clear cache button. Or maybe you are not interested in making it, uh, showing it, so you can hide it. So you can hide two functionalities on visualization mode for the widgets, enable screenshots on widget or not. So for example, you want to make a screen, enable the screenshot uh, properties, that is uh, make a screenshot and generate um, a JPG uh, image of all your cockpit. Uh, maybe you want to do that only on the entire cockpit and on, on the single cockpit. So for example, you can uh, disable these properties. Then in the widget style tab, we can set the general configuration for all the widgets. So set here the configuration for all the container that we will create. So for example, we had a chart widget, we had an active selection widget uh, like before, and we want that they have all the same border, the same uh, um, shadow, and uh, the, the title always um, of uh, Arial Font Family, and so on. Okay, so for example, I can set the border sol solid, the border thickness, uh, and the border color. And uh, in this way, now you can see that uh, we have the borders uh, uh, set it for both the widget because our generic configuration. So here I save and set the labels and name for the widget. And in this way, I save it. The label and their name are the unique identifier for your cockpit. So, uh, for example, we would call it uh, my first cockpit and then save. If you set the name uh, before in the generic configuration, you don't have to set it now. So now let's see how to create uh, another chart uh, and see how to make it readable. So, for example, maybe you want to show a hierarchy inside uh, your uh, chart and um, you want to go into detail inside this hierarchy. So, for example, we now selected a bar chart and we want to show product department and then go into detail for the product category. When we show the um, store sales measure. So, in this case, uh, we add two, as you can see in the structure, two uh, categories to our bar chart, and then one series, that is the one we show. Like before, we can set show value properties. For example, we can decide that our series is uh, ordered descending, is sorted descending, so from the greater to the lower value. And then here we can set uh, differently the ordering uh, and the orientation of our bar charts. Like before, here I can set my title and then uh, save my widget. So in this way, as you can see, the first view I have, it's uh, of the, all the value of the store says, uh, by product department or the descending. Then we will see that clicking on that bar, we can go into detail, for example, of a produce. So we see now all charts, but we can add two tabular analysis. So for example, the table and the cross table in this case. So this is the interface of our designer for the cross table. So here we have all the measure and attributes that we can use from the data set we selected. And here are the column, rows and measure areas. So we can drag and drop our uh, series, our, um, our attributes inside columns and rows. So uh, for example, we want to see the year and by product family, here in quotes and by product family, in the measure area, one or more measures that we want to see inside our cross table. All the information, if you can see the gear there, are to uh, set the configuration for the single, single elements you edit. 
Here in the configuration uh, tab, you can um, set general configurations. So for example, the maximum uh, cell number, decide if the measures are on columns or rows, if we want to calculate percentage on columns or rows, and two, if you want, we want totals and subtotals on columns and rows. So for example, here we decided to show totals on columns and show both two subtotals. So for uh, we have total for quarter and total for year. And then in style, we have a different configuration in style for uh, the totals, the subtotals, the measures, and two, we can set degrees and decide if we want to alternate colors for the rows and so on. Here, for example, we decided not to uh, show a title for the widget and we unselected it and unchecked it. So uh, you can resize it here and then you have your cockpit. Let's see now, I told you before, how we can create an HTML widget to add a card inside our cockpit. So we go to add widget we click on HTML and here is the designer of the widget. So in the first part, the top one, you have the CSS. So here you can add the CSS with all your style properties for your HTML. Then in HTML part, you add your HTML code. Consider that you can put static information inside your HTML or you can include two information uh, deriving from a data set there is, or a parameter, external parameter. So there is a um, standard syntax that you have to use to add this information. For example, in this case is the KN column properties written like that, where you set the name of the column of the data set and the aggregation type and the precision you want. If you want to uh, have this kind of information from a data set, you have to add the data set as we can see. In the style tab, you have the style. So for example, again, the style of the container of your widget. And in the data set area, you can add a data set if you want to uh, use information from a data set to show it inside the cockpit. So in that case, it was kappa n column uh, of a column from this kind of data set. And then here is created your widget HTML showing the card with the total stores cost. So we can save it and here we have our cockpit. So once you have created, an important thing is that all that you see in the edit mode, this is the edit mode, this one is the edit mode, so where you, um, you add, uh, um, you create your cockpit. Once you go to um, view mode, you will see that what you see here is the same that you can see in uh, view mode. So creating it, you have an idea of what will uh, appear then in visualization mode. So saving it, we go to the list of all our um, cockpit created and clicking on it and then on the play button, you can execute it in order to see it, it in visualization mode. So here are our cockpit. So then you can click on the different elements to interact. So for example, you can click on, on produce if you want to um, refresh your widget, having only information about produce and so on. So here we saw how to start creating our first cockpit. So in the last minute uh, we have, we will um, see some more uh, personalization and more things that you can do inside your cockpit. So, okay. So let's go, I logged in, maybe I do refresh inside an environment. I logged in like uh, um, in this case, not uh, end user, but like a technical user. And uh, indeed, is the way you create a cockpit is almost the same in both cases. So what I will show you now is the same uh, for technical user and end user.
The only difference here is how you access uh, into your uh, cockpit. So here in, we go to the document browser where we have all the documents. So this is the document browser with all the folders and we go to cockpit uh, folder in order to see all our cockpit. And we open the cockpit that we created before. So we execute it. So clicking on uh, edit cockpit, we can edit it and go in edit mode. So here there are the elements that we did before. Suppose, for example, that we wanted to add a background color to our cockpit. So what we can do, for example, let's take just a minute just to take the color that I selected before. Okay, so here, We can go in the generic configuration and here in the background color set our background so in this case is this one so we can edit save it and then the, the background is the only thing that you have to um, go before in visualization mode and then enter again in edit mode to see it so we save it just let me check Okay, and then we go to visualization mode and we can see that we set our background color. An interesting thing is that you can to set transparency for your background color. So for example, suppose that we want to do, I don't know if this is, this is meaningless or not, but for example, we can set it uh, dot seven, seven and then continue and we can see that the color changed because we changed the transparency suppose that maybe you don't want to uh, make a background color but you want to add an image to your background so in this case we go all no sorry not this one okay always in generic general configuration and instead of setting the background we need to set the background or the image. You have two ways to do that. First one is the one that you add uh, here an image to your uh, list of images. And so for example, I can go and choose a file. Sorry, just I have to go to that. Okay, so for example, I can set, uh, and just to see which one is, this kind of background here, upload the image, then go and find it, it is this one, click on here and copy image address. Then I go cancel, I go here in the general configuration and I copy it. Then not click on preview and then save so saving it and going to visualization mode i can see that now i have uh, the new um, uh, widget uh, uh, the new cockpit background with the image i uploaded before there is a, this is a, a way you can do that but if you have uh, um, more than one uh, environment, so for example, you have a development environment, then a test one and a production one, and you need to, to migrate your documents from one uh, um, environment to the other, there is another way that is uh, better for you because uh, in automatic, there is, um, when you migrate your document, you migrate to your background. In the way I showed you now, uh, the background is not migrated. So uh, going here, uh, we can decide to add uh, a different way, sorry, it was like that. So, so. What I can do is uh, add directly the base 64 um, code of your image. So this is, for example, a site where you can convert uh, an image to a base 64 information. So go again, 
uh, to the folder just to okay just to select the image so for example i can choose this image and then drag and drop it here so i do show code and copy to clipboard the base 64 code 64 code so here in my cockpit i go in general configuration and instead of inserting this word that it was the url of the last image i can copy the base 64 a uh, base 64 uh, code and then for example i just show you here if i don't set cover what happens so i save it i save and then clicking on continue you can see here that you have your image with the background color set if you want that your background image covers all your cockpit then you can oh sorry it's not the general configuration you can well first of all delete it and then select it as um, set it as cover and then we will can we will see as before that the image covers all the area of our cockpit backgrounds another interesting thing that you can do to personalize your cockpit is for example change the background of uh, your widgets so you can set the background color and styles but in uh, if you want to make it uh, equal for all um, the widget you can do it here so for example you can go here decide to have a, a shadow so for example a small shadow maybe you don't want to to have uh, the border of this color or so you don't want to have a border but you want to so you don't want to have a standard thickness for the border but you want to round them so for example you want to have a rounded border for top and bottom left and right border um corner and so you can set here the background you can set a color for your background or you can choose to to have a transparent background so here you can set transparent and then saving we can see that my dashboard my widgets will be transparent why chart uh, are not transparent this is because uh, we have to set to transparent to the um, chart background so we have to go here and here in background set transparent okay so here you can see if you don't want for example in this case a transparent um, uh, background but maybe you want have some opacity oh sorry you can go here and instead of transparent you can set for example rgba with 0 0.7 so sorry in this case it was black but it wasn't okay so to okay so here you can see that we have some transparency in the background that permit us to see and we can augment it or not but we can too set the same transparency if we want the title of our widgets or for example we can set it so here in the style we can select a different color for the background of the of our widgets so for example gray and then select a title color to white okay and save it so here I, we have a, a different style for our title from the background of the widget or we can uh, make it um, homogeneous so we can save it and all these um, as you can see all that you saw here is visible to inside our 
configuration. Not borders because I changed the color, maybe I put it. Okay. So, um, ah, what I want to show you before I told you that clicking on this, this is a drillable bar chart we did. Uh, if I click on the bar chart, as you can see, I go to the details. So from product department to product category. If I want to uh, use this chart and change the modality of selection, but change it to not filter, so not to drill down, but uh, in order to make it a filter for the other cockpit, we need to change it. This is that we cannot click on it. We want to make it click and make it selectable. So clicking on this bar, for example, in this case, produce a selection in the other uh, widgets. So here I see the stores by month only for produce department. This is the active selection widget. Another interesting thing that you can do here is setting it in chips mode. So not as a list, but you can select, for example, you don't want to see the name of the column, you just want to see the value, and here you can select the color of your chip. For example, we can set it, I don't know, like this color and then select this as white. Here you can set both use this or if you have a color, you can insert it or use hexadecimal um, configuration format too. And here you can see there is a, this kind of visualization where you can here delete and select. So April, for example, and back goods. So different selection and then I can click on it and change it. And as you can see, all refreshes. Here in the data configuration, as you, you, you can see, we have two data set in the, in the association, we associated it in order to make this kind of selection active both for both the data sets. So if I click on store states that in a column of store state, then the selection that I, did, I do in store state reflects to, to uh, this data set that is a file data set uploaded by the end user. So these are some of the personalization you can do. And there are many more. So, uh, now I want to leave uh, some time for you to make some question. And maybe if you want to see something more, um, you or some say um, know something more about you, what you can do to personalize your cup with, you can uh, tell me. So one question more that can be is uh, um, maybe you saw, they asked me for the filter tab that is from here, for example, we have it. In this tab, you can define uh, filter your data, so uh, filter of your data. So for example, selecting the data set uh, uh, that you are using inside the cockpit, you can select that you want to see only product family equal to, for example, and I don't remember goods. Okay, so you can save it and save. Just a thing that I just now that uh, there is a little moment, maybe a uh, thing that I um, I haven't uh, told you before is that uh, now we have our uh, it's um, seventh uh, seven uh, version of No Agent. Inside this new version we released uh, a few months a few months ago, uh, we have a new widget that you can use and. Uh, I want to show you that are the solar widget and the map widget. So here I show you just a simple example of the solar widget. So if you create a dataset solar in Sinoage, you then can use it inside the dataset widget where you can, the discovery widget, sorry, um, where that you can choose, for example, if you have some information. So for 
you have uh, this data set you want to know the face so how many food consumable drink records you have and you can too do searches so for example i want to search breakfast foods and then right in here i can see all the data about food and here for example i want to see only q3 information information and i click on it okay and then unselect it and i go back so this is uh, the discovery widget that you can create uh, inside cockpit in version 7 of no age and then there is two the um, map widgets so here from 7 release you can um, you can create a directly map inside Noage. You have to create a data set that have some attri special attribute, and then uh, you can use that data set to, um, to edit directly inside your cockpit. So here, for example, maybe use. Okay, so for example, here we have our map widget. Okay, so there are the, the generic configuration that you have uh, for the other widgets, so for the other containers, so title, transparency, and so on, and the configuration of your map with the different layers and measures that you want to show inside it. So these are uh, some new uh, thing that you have available in, in uh, seven version. And if you don't have uh, any more question, um, I will say you goodbye. If you maybe some question um, to the question that maybe I haven't uh, answered because maybe I didn't see it now or other question that comes to you, uh, feel free to contact us and uh, write us and I will uh, answer you uh, and I will answer you. And um, uh, follow us uh, on uh, Twitter and on our YouTube channel uh, and uh, Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube channel because uh, we we plan to we have some uh, tutorial inside the channel and we plan to add a new one with other information and the information on how to create copy and personalize it and about all other functionalities that Noage make available. So I thank you and uh, hope to have uh, news from you soon and uh, I will answer to the question that I didn't answer now if by email. So thank you and uh, good uh, good evening.